Welcome to part three. This is our presentation on home wireless. It's a comprehensive review of proper setup, troubleshooting, and good wireless security. If you haven't seen video one and video two on this series on home wireless, you can go to my channel on YouTube and just click on the search button. You can then type in wireless, home wireless, and hit enter and it should pull up the video one on home wireless security and video two and you can take a look at those. We have already covered in part one and part two understanding what can cause poor home wireless connectivity and proper setup of your wireless. We've also looked at purchasing wire wireless solutions for your home. We've also looked extensively at a variety of ways of troubleshooting wireless problems. In part three we're going to focus on security of your wireless and a look at Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6. As any type of security, wireless security is about learning the best practices and implementing them in your home. Wireless attacks on your home are pretty well documented. Basically, they are as follows. A passive attack, which basically is a reconnaissance. Once they've collected enough information, then they go to step two, which is an active attack. They also use man in the middle, they use signal jamming, 802.11 injection, wireless packet injection, PSK guessing, and key cracking. One of the challenges is I try to explain different settings and features and things to do in your, home, in your wireless router to improve your security is that the different models and brands, the interfaces are so different. So this is the interface of a TP-Link, and here we have a Linksys router and this is an ASUS. They even change the terms. One router vendor may call this one thing, and then another router vendor calls it something else. So I'm going to, in, dem in showing you these different feature sets, I'm gonna demonstrate them in both the TP-Link and the ASUS. They're both very different interfaces, and hopefully when you get into yours, you'll be able to figure it out. We're gonna start with the wireless SSID. You generally have three radios in most home wireless boxes that you purchase. They'll have one 2.4 radio and they'll have two 5 gig radios. The SSID is simply a visible name to that radio. What you want to avoid is the model and the make of your wireless access point. You don't want it to say ASUS and you don't want it to say TP-Link. You don't want it to include a model number. Don't put a house number. Don't put your name. Don't put anything that identifies you with the radio name of your wireless router. I want to show you that you have two wireless networks. And it's very important that you find them and you understand the difference between them. This wireless tab shows me my internal wireless network. And I have three radios. I have a 2.4 gig radio. I have one 5 gig. And then I have another 5 gig. I need to know all these radios. Down here is another tab. This is called a guest network. This is also the same wireless radio, the same two 5 gig radios. The difference between my guest wireless network and this wireless tab is this is internal to my network. This one, anyone connecting to this wireless network can only see the internet. That's it. This is a better place to put most of your wireless devices on. I would reserve this wireless network only for devices that you absolutely have to, to put here. Let me give you an example. You have a wireless printer and you need laptops and devices in your home to be able to print to that. Then all of those items need to be connected to this wireless network. But you may have a Google Assistant you may have Amazon Alexa, you may have a camera, you may have other devices, connect them to your guest wireless network. That way, if anyone hacks those devices, it makes it more difficult for them to get into your home network. So back to my SSIDs. I'm gonna be wanting to name my 2.4 gigahertz wireless, something that is generic. I don't wanna tell hackers I have a TP-Link. 
I don't want to tell hackers my street, my house number. I don't want to tell hackers my name. I want this very generic. So I'm going to blow this back and let's call it black hole. And one thing I want to add to this SSID is I want to be able to know that that's a 2.4 gigahertz radio. So I'm going to put 2.4. That's going to tell me that when I look at my SSID and I see black hole 2.4, I am, and I use that SSID, I'm connecting up to my 2.4 radio. Now in my SSID for my 5 gig wireless, remember I have two radios in 5 gig. So I'm going to put black hole 5, that no, I know that that's a 5 gig radio, and I'm going to put dash 1. That means that's radio 1 for the 5 gig. When I'm creating the SSID for the second 5 gig radio, notice what I changed. I still put 5, dash 2. Why is this important? Because I don't want to go into my house and connect all my devices to one radio on my wireless access point. So for example, if I have two 4K TVs in the house, I want to connect one to my 5 gig one, and I want to connect the other to my 5 gig two. I want to split the load between the two radios. I've been in people's wireless in their home, and they have every single device in their home connected to one radio. And they have another radio no one's using. And they wonder why they have bad thoroughput. Now back to the guest wireless network. Notice this checkbox. It says, allow these folks to access my local network. That's the last thing I want them to do. So I don't want any of these folks connecting to my local network. I can allow or not allow them to access each other. That's up to you. I would, if, if you can get away with it, leave that off. Remember, anybody connected to the guest network is separated from your internal network. Now back to our internal wireless network. And notice I've already given them a name. What I did add was I added the, the letter I. I know that this black hole 24 has an I in it. I know that's internal. This black hole I 5-1 is internal. So I'm going to only use these radios only if I'm going to share a printer. I have a wireless printer that people connect to. You're probably going to have to go in this network and use connect your devices to this wireless network. Where possible, use the guest network. It adds a layer of security for your home. If you don't need the internal wireless at all, go ahead and give the SSIDs a name, then simply hide them. You can check them and they won't be visible. All right, back to some fundamentals. Where possible, connect all the devices in your home to one or the other five gig radios. You'll get your best performance. There'll be devices that you have to use a 2.4 radio. Use it, you got it. Also, split the devices in your home equally among the two five gig radios. That's why you indicate one and two you know which radio you're connecting to. In our ASUS interface, we can come up and see our five gig radio. And in this particular router, we only have one five gig radio. So again, we wanna generically rename this radio SSID to indicate that it's five gigs. In this case, there's not a one or a two, so you can put some Knight Rider 5 or whatever. Just something that doesn't indicate like ASUS. So these are just really common sense things. Keep your SSID generic. Now up here is the guest network. In the ASUS, they have a guest network, just like we saw on the TP-Link. It's a little bit different. Notice here's your 2.4 gigahertz radio. You can enable it and then you can change the SSID. And then you have your five gigahertz radio. In this case, we only have one. We can enable it, and again, you want to generic, put a generic name in for your five. Put a five into the five and a 2.4 in the 2.4 so that when you're out connecting your clients, you know which radio you're connecting to. Next, we want to set all of our radios to WPA2 personal encryption mode. As with all router brands, as you get into their interface, they're also different. So let's go into wireless, and I'm going to go into advanced. And I'm going to come over to the wireless tab and just drop down into wireless settings. And you can see by default, WPA, WPA2 personal is the recommended security level 
for most home router settings. You can see you can go to enterprise, but I would stay with personal because many clients, many devices you have in your home will at least be able to reach this level. This is the minimum that you want. If I go to Linksys, I'm in the wireless. Let me go back to the home section. So with a Linksys wireless router, we'll again go to wireless. And you can see here they have the security mode for the 2.4 is WPA2 personal. That's what we want. And in the 5 gigahertz radio, you can see WPA personal. With our ASUS router, down here in our wireless tab, we come over here to authentication method. Notice they use all different kinds of terms. That's what's frustrating about different brands. But if you look, you'll find WPA2 personal. You still may be a little confused when I talk about two separate wireless networks. And in this case, we saw on the interfaces for the routers, one called it a guest wireless network, and then I called the other one the internal. When we assign SSIDs to each of these radios, we assign them, we give them names, and we assign them to the guest wireless network. So when anyone connects to those SSIDs, they are in this network. On the other hand, we also give another set of SSID names, but these names are assigned to the internal wireless network. What's the difference? Well, number one, anybody in this guest network, this wireless network, can go out to the internet, no problem, but they cannot see anybody on the internal network. All those RJ45 jacks in the back of your wireless router, they can't see them, they can't talk to them, they can do nothing. They simply can connect and go to the internet. That is safety for you. Now on the internal network is totally different. They can go to the internet, they can see the guests, they can actually talk to those RJ45 jacks in the back. So if you plug a computer back there, the Radios that if you connect your clients to the internal SSIDs, they can talk to those devices. So the internal wireless network has access to the to everything, but the guest wireless SSIDs or the guest network can only go to the internet and that adds the layer of protection you want. Let's say you buy an IoT device like a camera and you put it in your home you don't watch the security news on that camera every day. You don't pay attention to uh, vulnerabilities for every device in your home. But that device probably will not get another firmware update maybe once, maybe twice in its entire useful lifetime. If a vulnerability is made known in that vendor's camera, which network do you want it to be on? The one network that if they do are able to hack into that camera, it simply goes to the internet, or would you rather the camera be on your internal wireless network where they can now access everything in your house? This is why you want to use the guest network. Number four on our wireless security is no remote administration of your router. Remote administration is a tempting setting, but it is a deadly one. I'm going into my TP-Link interface. I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to slide this down so you can see that I'm going to come down to the system tools tab, open that up and I'm going to slide that up to you see administration and I'm going to click on that and notice the setting. It says remote management and it's enabled. This is a deadly setting. This simply means you can go to your friend's house or your or you can go on a vacation and you can use an HTTPS address and get access to your router. The problem with that is if you can, somebody else can. So you don't want anyone on the internet to be able to access the administration pages of your home router. We're going to uncheck that. In our ASUS, I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to pull this down so you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm coming down to the administration tab and I'm clicking on that. I'm coming up to the system tab and notice you're having to hunt for this. And down here, it gives me the option of remote access config, enable web access from the WAN. You do not want that. That's remote access. The only way you want someone to be able to get into your router is take a laptop or a desktop, plug into the back of the router, and that's the only way. In other words, they have to break your door down, 
bust into your house, plug into the back of your router. That's the only way they're going to get into your router. Be sure to set up a long and complex ad admin username and password for your wireless router. Let's first take a look at the ASUS router. I'm going to scroll down and let's take a look at the administrative tab right here. And we're going to go to system. Here you can see a router login name and it's admin. That's one thing you want to change. So you want to change the router login name. You do not want to use the default admin and you want to use a long and complex password. I prefer a password generator. So I would try as large as many characters as possible. Some routers have limits. So start with 32 and see if it will buy 32. If it will, use at least 32 characters in your admin password. You can print it, put it in a folder, put it in somewhere that's safekeeping, but use a strong password. There is a growing list of vendors that are wanting you to do cloud-based management, where you create a cloud and account and you manage your device via a cloud account. If there are no options, then make sure your username and password are extremely complex and difficult. So in my case, I have a TP-Link and it wanted me to use a cloud-based account to manage the router. But down in the advanced pages of the manual was a way that I could use the router IP, as you can see in my URL, I'm accessing it via 192.168. 0.1. So I prefer this method. In this case, I still have to have a email address and a password or a username and password. Remember, do not leave that hard coded admin as a username with the router. Change it. Now to connect to your wireless, you're going to have to use a password or technically it's called a WPA shared key. I recommend not using passwords, but passphrases. So let me explain, explain the difference between a, a password and a passphrase. Passphrases are complex, but easier to remember. For example, using names of friends. Here I've used the asterisk Joe dot asterisk Pete dot asterisk William dot. And you can see the, the idea, but I'm using names of friends that I can remember very easily. I'm adding some complexity, the dot, the asterisk, and in that it's long, it's complex, and it's easy for re me to remember. I can use schools that I attended, dollar sign Ringgold dot dollar sign elementary dot dollar sign West. And you can see, you can also use the names of school uh, teachers at school and any other combination. A passphrase is something that's complex, but easy to remember. And that's what you want to use on your wireless. There is one type of wireless security do not use. It's called WPS. And it was designed to make it easy to connect a client to your wireless network. Sometimes they have a button. Sometimes they generate a particular pin code. Do not use WPS. Here's an example on the ASUS router where it says provides easy and secure establishment of a wireless network. It's anything but secure. So don't use WPS. Here we have here we have an example of WPS on the TP link. The sad fact is that consumer based wireless routers are updated maybe twice, maybe three times in their production life cycle. But I would check anyway. That router update could patch a serious vulnerability. So take a look, but make sure you're up to date with your vendor's firmware update. As I was preparing for this presentation on wireless, I discovered all kinds of great resources. You can pause the video and take a look at some of these. I'll also put them in the description. So you're welcome to take a look and check them out for yourself. Thank mm -hmm. you.